Society is currently facing what the World Health Organization calls an infodemic of misinformation. We're surrounded by fake news, by alternative facts, by a stream of falsehoods from business and political leaders. This misinformation harms individuals, organizations, society, and undermines the foundations of democracy. What can we do about it? Well, a lot of great research from social scientists and social media platforms have been helping people distinguish between what's fake and what's fact. But as a social psychologist who studies how people think about morality, my concern is that these efforts are insufficient. Because sometimes people recognize that misinformation is false and they just don't care. Take, for example, uh, fake news articles that are intentionally and verifiably false and that could mislead readers. Nationally representative survey data from the US and the UK suggests that between 14 and 17 percent of adults will admit to having shared fake news on social media knowing at the time it was fake. So at least some of the time some people have little compunction about spreading misinformation. The implication here is that to stop the spread of misinformation, we need to do more than to understand why people believe it. We also need to understand why people excuse it. So how do people decide whether misinformation is morally permissible to spread? Well, today I want to talk about one simple and scary factor, which is how familiar that misinformation is. Take, for example, the observation that political leaders sometimes repeat the same falsehood again and again and again and again, even hundreds of times, long after that falsehood has been thoroughly and publicly debunked. When they do this, the same person is likely to encounter that same falsehood more than one time. Or take the observation from research that fake news can spread on social media faster and farther than real news. When fake news does go viral, the same person is likely to encounter the same piece of fake news again and again and again. What happens when the same person encounters the same piece of misinformation multiple times? Well, I conducted a, a series of experiments testing the hypothesis that fake news will seem less unethical to spread when people have seen it before, even if they don't believe the fake news. Why would this happen? Well, if you've encountered the same piece of information multiple times, that piece of information will start to feel familiar. And prior research suggests that if information feels familiar, it will take on this quality that comedian Stephen Colbert referred to as truthiness. Truthiness is a gut feeling that there's something to that piece of information. And the gut feeling is different than what we believe. We can be incredibly confident in our heads that something is false, and yet not be able to shake the gut feeling that there's a ring of truthfulness to it. And I want to claim that that ring of truthfulness informs our moral judgments about misinformation even when we know it's false. In other words, if we know that it's false with our heads, but we can't shake the feeling that it's true in our guts, we might think that that piece of misinformation is a little less unethical to spread. I tested this idea in a bunch of experiments, and I'll show you a couple of them today. This first experiment, we recruited some American participants online, and we showed them fake political news that had actually circulated on social media. Participants saw a headline and a photograph, and half of these headlines are meant to appeal to Democrats, and the other half are meant to appeal to Republicans. Turns out it didn't matter whether the fake news appealed to Democrats or Republicans, we got the same effects for both political groups. So we have 12 headlines. At the beginning of the study, we randomly select six headlines and show them to participants four times. For each headline, participants fill out a few uh, different ratings of the headline, just as an excuse to get the headline in front of them. Then there's a brief delay, and four or five minutes later, participants see all 12 headlines, and they rate how ethical or unethical each one would be to share on social media. Now, half of these headlines they've seen at the very beginning of the study. 
and half of the headlines they've seen for the first time. So we're controlling whether the headlines are familiar to participants because they've seen them before or whether they're new. Now, for all the headlines, we tell participants this is fake news. Nonpartisan fact-checking websites have debunked all this stuff. None of it is real. And the results show that participants believe us. They think that the, the headlines are completely fake, regardless of whether they've seen them before. So repeatedly encountering the same headline doesn't make it seem truer, but it does make it seem a little less unethical to spread. So here are the results for the question where we ask people how ethical or unethical it is to spread this headline on social media. And the ratings are made on a 100-point scale. You'll notice that I've truncated the y-axis. This is good news because this means that the average participant thought it was pretty unethical to spread blatantly false misinformation. But as you'll see, we were able to push around just how unethical they thought it was. Participants thought it was less unethical to share fake news on social media when they'd seen that fake news a few minutes before than when they were seeing it for the first time. So, repeatedly encountering the same fake news article made it seem less unethical to spread. And these moral judgments that people make matter. We also found that if you'd seen a headline a few minutes before, you thought it was less unethical to spread, and the less unethical you thought it was to spread, the more likely you were to say that you would share it yourself on social media or express approval by liking it. So the punchline of this and other experiments is that fake news seems less unethical to spread if you've seen it before, even when you know that it's false. These results suggest a real dilemma that fact checkers face. If you want to debunk a false claim, you have to repeat the false claim. That is, you have to tell people what the falsehood is that you're debunking. And even if that debunking is successful, even if people no longer believe the falsehood, well, you, you've now made the falsehood familiar by repeating it. And if it feels familiar, people may think it's a little less unethical to spread. So what can we do about this? Well, one promising solution is to encourage people to think a little bit more carefully about the morality of sharing false content. This is referred to as moral deliberation, essentially using your head instead of your gut to evaluate whether it's right or wrong to spread content that you know is false. Some preliminary evidence for this idea comes from a second experiment that I'll share with you today. I recruited over 750 participants online from the US, and I put them through the same procedure that I told you about a few minutes ago. At the beginning of the study, people see six fake news headlines, after a brief delay, they see 12 fake news headlines, six of which they saw a few minutes ago, and six of which they're seeing for the first time. This time, however, everyone is told just before they make their final ratings either to think carefully about their moral judgments or to use their guts. More specifically, we randomly assigned half the participants to read instructions encouraging them to think a little harder about whether it's ethical or unethical to share content that's false on social media. We told them to ignore their gut feelings and to write down two reasons why they thought it was ethical or unethical to uh, spread this information. The other half of participants, we randomly assigned to be encouraged to use their guts, to make their moral judgments based on their first instincts and not to provide any sort of reasons why they thought it was right or wrong. So here are the results. Once again, higher numbers on the y-axis indicate that you think it's more unethical to share this content. Let's start with participants who were encouraged to use their guts in making their moral judgments. Here we see the same effect I showed you a few minutes ago. That is, people think it's less unethical to share fake news headlines that they know are fake if they've seen the headlines a few minutes before than if they haven't. But when we encourage people to use their heads instead of their guts, when we encourage them to think a little bit more carefully about their moral judgments, this effect becomes smaller. Now people think it's pretty unethical to share the fake news headlines, regardless of whether they've seen them before or not. So the punchline here is that repetition is making the headlines seem less unethical to share, but using moral deliberation makes this effect a little bit smaller. 
Now, there is a statistical caveat. We can be really confident that repeatedly encountering the same piece of fake news makes it seem less unethical to spread. We can be a little less confident that thinking hard eliminates this effect. The reason is that we planned two statistical analyses. One produced a statistically significant result. The other one, uh, the result was uh, not quite statistically significant. This means that before getting too excited about the idea that thinking hard makes everything better, we would want to repeat this experiment and see if we got the same results. So let me leave you with a few conclusions. Fighting misinformation requires doing more than just trying to understand why people believe it. We also need to understand why people excuse it. And my research suggests that people are more likely to excuse misinformation even if they know that it's false in their heads, if it feels truthy in their guts. Now this psychological tendency means that we are vulnerable to manipulation by people who want to spread misinformation. To get off the hook for dishonesty, these people don't need to convince us that what they're saying is true. All they need to do is repeat the same falsehood again and again and again. There are two important things we can do about this now. A good first step is to recognize that all of us are probably vulnerable to letting people off the hook a little bit more if they've repeated the same falsehood multiple times. Going further, uh, I would encourage all of us to think a little bit more carefully about our moral values before we share content on social media that we know is false. More broadly, as a society, we should realize that addressing our current infodemic of misinformation requires doing more than convincing people that misinformation is factually false. We need to encourage people to think about whether spreading misinformation is morally wrong.